Across the world, one in three women has been bitten, coerced into sex, or abused by people they know, love, and trust. Here in Nigeria, one in five women has been a victim of abuse. Gender-based violence is the leading cause of death and disability of women between the ages of 19 to 44. Queen James, not her real name, a 47-year-old writer based in Lagos, was married off at 17. She barely knew the man who was to become her husband. I just finished from secondary school and my parents were like, you have to marry, that they have somebody for me. I tried to argue that um, I want to go back to school. My parents said they don't have money for me to further education, so I didn't have any option than to accept. Queen enjoyed the first decade of her marriage. Her husband paid for her university education and they had three children together. In 2002, Quinn's sister-in-law claimed she was a witch. Her husband believed it and turned against her. She suffered financial deprivation and domestic violence. While I was in school, everything was going well until the senior sister came into the house. The sister kept telling him different, different stories that he, he see a revelation, I'm going to kill him. I want to give him stroke. I now, at a point, he now told him that, in fact, I'm a witch, that I'm going to kill him if he doesn't send me out of the house. This man started beating me every day. If he has small problem in the office, I'll come back. The sister will tell him, ah, it's your wife. He wants them to sack you from work. The United Nations defines violence as any act that results in physical, sexual or mental harm or suffering to women, including threats of such acts, coercion or arbitrary deprivation of liberty. Domestic violence is violence that occurs in a domestic setting, such as a marriage or cohabitation, committed by people in an intimate relationship against the other person. Every night, he will squeeze my neck Tell me to confess all the wicked thing I'm doing to him, all the wicked thing I'm doing to the children. That there's a revelation I want to, you know, kill my children. Another day he comes and they say that I've already made a plan to kill him and take over his property. Uh, that I should tell him why I want to kill him. Everything was just like, you know, like a dream to me. He did not allow me to go to shop. I only go and buy things and the girl that was in the shop was the one selling at a point. He now locked up the shop, came back to the house. When I returned back to the house, I started looking for work. Anywhere I want to go and work, it will go and let, tell them not to employ me. Like many women, Queen did not file for a divorce or leave her abusive relationship. She feared for her safety and the welfare of her children and decided to endure the misery. One day in 2005, Queen's husband did more than bit her. He armed himself with a pestle and broke her bone. It was even my husband that you say, Pistin, you know, this mortar handle and hit on my leg. My leg was broken, so I managed to my sister's place. My sister took me to the hospital. When I got there, they did x-ray. They said I have bone fracture. I called my parents and said they should send me to the village I went. They took me to hospital where they did my bone. I was there for three months. That abuse contravened the Protection Against Domestic Violence Law of Lagos State 2007. The law prohibits violence against any person. It also empowers a police officer to arrest persons suspected of committing violent offences. In addition, it directs the police to render assistance to victims of domestic violence. More than 4 billion naira was allocated to the police for travels and transport in Nigeria's 2005 national budget. But when Queen visited the police to get a report, officers demanded 6,000 naira as transport fare. She also claims the police officers accepted a bribe from her husband to dismiss the case. I quite remember one of them saying that they have to treat that case very well because a man has paid a lot for the case, meaning they've collected money. A 2019 survey by the Social Economic Rights and Accountability Project, SERAP, 
reports that the Nigerian police force is the most corrupt institution in Nigeria. The report stated that a bribe is paid in 54% of interactions with the police and that there is a 63% probability that an average Nigerian will be asked to pay a bribe each time he or she interacted with the police. With the police allegedly eating from the palm of her former husband, they accused her of attempted murder, arrested her sister, and he served her divorce papers. I made a statement that a arm robbers invaded his house. They went away with a property worth 2.5 million with a cash of 180,000 attempted murder and all that. They, almost, they, they shoot gun, they shoot the sister on the head. I said, oh, this is not true. Okay, I gave my own statement. When I gave my own statement, they were now dragging me to sell. So I shouted, I was pleading for help. Before I knew it, they came, they called me this time around. And they showed me arrest warrants and that my, in my arrest warrant, no bail. That is how they took me to sell. Her experience went downhill from there. The police turned around to arrest a victim who approached them for protection and locked her up at Kirikiri Maximum Prison for almost three weeks. Do you know that when the police, my younger, my senior sister was seeing period, police women could not even help, even when we were begging them, please, this lady is on her period. Can you help us bring tissue? It did not bring. And there are other women like that. The place was smelling. There was nothing. I think she had to use her head tie to try and wrap and use. The police are very rude. They don't take care of their inmates at all. They don't want to know whether what they have accused you of is true or is, is false. These details expose a breach of fundamental rights to dignity of the human person, stipulated in Section 34 of the Nigerian Constitution. We put these allegations of corruption and human rights abuse in police custody to the Nigerian police force. Professional misconduct, but I get the facts, like every other professional misconduct of our men, we do allow it to go unattended to. So let's do that. As this one now, the victim let them get across to me, they can meet the DC, the Commissioner of Police. So they put up attention to me, to the officers, so we take action. We don't condone anything that is unprofessional unless it's open to acknowledge. So in this case now, don't let me get the facts and to monitor it, I will not disappoint to all those officers that have done that. One way or the other, four people, they will face a different procedure. And to scrap all this, to be better than to them. With the intervention of a non governmental organization, Project Alert, Queen was set free. But she has not seen her children ever since. It was during this period that I met with Project Alert on violence against women. They took over the case, they stood by me, we went through the case, went for seven years. I was going we'll finish the case after seven years and I was set free. Meanwhile, my children was taken from me from the time they pushed me out of that house. I did not have access to my children. Until now. Josephine Chukuma is the executive director of Project Alert. She condemns Nigeria's police force for breaking the domestic violence law of Lagos State 2007 and calls for these reforms in the force. It's about the system not working. And why is the system not working? First and foremost is the issue of funding. What, what are they given? What funding do they get to operate? You know, and then the capacity, the training of the officials, how professional are they? You need officers that are trained and well resourced to respond to cases of um, sexual and gender based violence. Like many women, Queen now wears the scars of a broken leg, a broken marriage, and suffers the consequence of a broken justice system.